Hunter bring you another action figure review. Today we're looking at the NECA Street Scene Diorama. This is the generic regular version, not the San Diego Comic Con exclusive Ninja Turtle version that came out last year. For those of you that missed the Ninja Turtle version, it's very cool. They're releasing a public version for everyone to be able to get a hold of. This item is a holy grail in the 112th action figure collecting. It's an absolutely fantastic diorama, possibly the best one that's out there. So let's take a look at the packaging. On the front here you can see NECA, street scene, diorama, nice sort of generic city looking background here. Easily display over 30 figures at once and I'd say it's a very accurate statement, 10 per level. You could easily probably fit 50 on there if you make them snug. Take your action figure display to the next level, over 2 feet tall, of course that does include the cardboard background. Now here on the top, NECA Street Scene, oh, what's that? Yes, I did buy two of them. I plan to display both of these in my action figure world. So on the top, Street Scene Diorama again. The side, same thing. Other side, exact same thing. The bottom, got a barcode, barely any words, useless stuff. And then here we go, the back side. NECA Street Scene Diorama, little description telling you to make great scenes and et cetera, et cetera. You can see the cardboard backdrop can do either nighttime or daytime. Reversible skyline backdrop for both day and night scenes. Over two feet wide, accommodates most action figures between six and nine inches tall. Pretty impressive item. I got mine from DCBService.com, DiscountComicService.com, for only $84 each. A lot cheaper than the retail price I've seen elsewhere. One annoying thing, though, is I had to pre-order it quite a bit ahead of time, and I'm getting this item almost a full two months or at least six weeks after everybody else did. And this website would not let me cancel my pre-order and order it somewhere else, so I was sort of locked in and unable to get this item. So... Let's go ahead and check out the package it came in and go ahead and open this bad boy up. We will assemble it together, but we'll do it slowly and off screen, but I will show you step by step what to expect. And then we will check it out for his other dioramas and see how all kind of different action figure lines fit in with this thing. So here's the original box that these came in. You can see here I put a DC Universe Classics figure at the bottom to show you just how large this box is between two and three feet tall. And as I start to unopen the package, there's another box inside of this box. I thought this original box was ridiculously oversized for what it was. I knew it was just gonna be the diorama in here. Down here is gonna be two dioramas inside that smaller box. I'm not sure why they put it into such a huge box on top of there, kinda odd. I actually see they made a royally large box out of two smaller boxes I see taped together at the bottom. And here they are, two of them. You can see NECA, street scene diorama, no turtles logo, no nothing, just a generic diorama for action figures. All right, and here's the next step in unboxing this item. You can see here, this is gonna have all the contents of the box coming out of there. I'm gonna be assembling two of these at the same time off screen, and as I recall, it took quite a bit of time to assemble each one. And then here it is with all the contents taken out of the box. See lots and lots of different panels, floor pieces, accessories. Now here we go, all the contents out of their plastic bags, laid out, ready to start to be assembled. We're almost ready to start looking at the instruction manual and figuring out what's step number one. And let's see how place set number two is doing. Looks like he's coming along nicely as well. Next, let's look at the instruction sheet. This is page one. It is a five page instruction sheet, but don't let that be too intimidating. The first couple pages are just NECA diorama parts list. I'm not gonna verify that I have all these parts. If there's even one part missing, it's gonna ruin this whole operation, but I'm pretty confident they're not gonna miss anything for me. And then more 
Diorama parts list. And then here we go to NECA Diorama assembly instruction on page three here. Now, last time I did this, I started here, or start building stuff together. Make sure you start with step number one, like it tells you. It really messed me up last time. And that is to take each one of these pieces, removing the actual brick, whole panel, including the window, so you can put the glass windows on. You have to remove this in order to be able to access these little pegs here. So next I took all six of the glass window frames. They're not actually glass, they're plastic, but they tend to be substitutes glass. I took them out, got them ready to attach to these guys here. You may notice each one of these has a little hole and you can insert them into these four pegs right here. Now one thing I will point out is taking these things out was a lot smoother with this set than the original Turtles release. I felt I was gonna break some of them before. I remember one piece I had to wrestle with for over 10 minutes and it had like white residue as if it was glued on and it had pried out. So big thumbs up for that. So just for example, one piece here. Pretty simple, just get the little pegs into the holes, push it in. Once it's firmly attached, you've got it the way it's supposed to be and you can reinsert this piece into the wall. Now that we got all six of the window frames in, it was quite a pleasure compared to last time where it was also possible to dig them out. These things are gonna be interchangeable, so you could take this out and swap it with the brick wall or the doorway, as well as change the top row. This is not set up the same way as the turtle one was upon default. I think it's pretty cool. I never was able to change them very well with the turtle one. This place that definitely has to take a step up in quality control. All right, and here we go. We are ready to start step one. You'll take the very base sidewalk piece, attach the front wall with the door and the windows, two side walls, the next layer, sort of semi-roof, and then a pipe for the front. And as you begin to assemble the base of this diorama, this area fits down here, but make sure that you slide these pieces here, each one of these little pegs under these holders here will help stabilize, help stability, make sure they all get inside of there properly. And then on the next piece that goes on top, there are these little risen areas right here. And make sure they go behind this wall here. And here is how it looks after step one is completed. Let's see how the other diorama is holding up. It's coming along just nicely as well. Now we are ready to start step number two. Going to take the base that we've already assembled, add another one of the pipes, as well as the next wall area, the two smaller walls inside, and the final rooftop piece up top. And then as you take the next layer of the building, it has the same tabs down here. Make sure that these tabs go underneath those and it will help stabilize it. All right, here I am trying to get them into the little peg slots. It can be a little bit difficult at times. Make sure they all fit in there nice and snug and it really adds support to the place set if you get in there just right. And then as you take the small rooftop piece, once again, make sure that the lip will go underneath these parts here as you attach it. It will add even more stability and durability to your playset. And then here is the playset after step two is fully completed. Looking pretty good, definitely taking some good form at this point. And of course, here is number two, continuing to keep up with progress of number one. All right, and now that step two is finished, let's move on to page four, and here we go, step number three, where it looks like you get 40 of these brick pieces, and my God, why they do this, I don't know. It's so bizarre in the first place, so they sure repeated themselves in this one. And you can plug in all 40 of these holes. Now here's a playset after step three is complete with all 
40 of the bricks in place, covering all the holes. The reason I make such a big deal about having 40 of those is it's actually nonsense, it's ludicrous. It comes with one variant piece, which is the air conditioner here, and it really gives you 40 different options where you can put it on this wall. Like, what is the point of that? It makes no sense to me whatsoever. Why would they not just make the, all the holes covered except for maybe three of them? Why 40 different places? Makes me wonder if maybe they're going to release an accessory set one day for this with different stuff you can add on there. But honestly, it just makes no sense. I had to cost them extra to cut these out and make them separate instead of just making a whole brick wall. What they have found kind of amusing is I can't, it comes with one extra piece because it comes with a total of 40 to cover all 40 holes. But since you use the AC, you don't need all 40 of them. But my other playset came with three extra pieces. Found that just a little bit odd. Even the old Ninja Turtle ones I had had one extra piece each. And of course, step two with the other one. It's moving along nicely. Next we're looking at step four. You take these pieces, there should be five of them, and they go underneath the roof and it sort of clips the roof and that wall together, kind of secures it even more so than it already is. Now I found step four to be the easiest if you remove the rooftop piece here. Now you can see there's some areas here that the area kind of rises next to these peg holes here. And there's an area on the pieces that kind of goes down and keeps going around. That's the only way you can possibly attach them. These pegs go into the peg holes, but you can only do it here where it kind of rises up and it matches. Go and assemble all five of those. And once you have attached all five of those, make sure that this lip area here on the top goes underneath where these pieces attach and it will add durability and stabilization to your playset. And then here it is after step four is complete. Looks exactly the same, but is a little more stable. And then here we are at step five. Take six of these little brick type things, add them to the inside of the wall, and it will give you the peg holes for the background piece. And then here it is, the final couple steps. You take these little pegs, you have six of them, and you put the cardboard back across the playset, enter the pegs, then bam, you got the finished product. Now here's the full diorama complete with its cardboard piece attached, every single thing being utilized. It's huge, it looks absolutely fantastic. And here they are as they are taking their rightful place in my action figure city. Alright, well next let's check out the height and measurements of this diorama. So, from top to bottom, it's sitting at just about 28 inches tall, including the cardboard. And with just the plastic, it's about 19 inches tall. Next, from left to right, this place is sitting at about 25 and a half inches wide. And then how deep is it? From back to front, sitting at just a hair under 13 inches deep. And then here's the back side. You can see there are six brown pegs holding the cardboard piece in. And of course, it's reversible. You can see here on the back side, it's daytime. In the front, it's nighttime. Here it is with the nighttime up top. And then here it is with the daytime on top. And then here they are side by side with nighttime and daytime, both how they look together. And here they are side by side, absolutely massive, huge, huge building, both with matching night background drops. And then here they are both lined up with the daytime background together. And then notice that on the playset, the left hand side of the playset has a curved edge, and then the right hand side of the playset has a straight edge, thus making them not exactly fit together perfectly in a straight row like this. Just one small detail that I find a little bit annoying. And then let's not forget that the San Diego Comic Con Turtle exclusive version came with a different city background. Left hand side here, these two came with the turtle set. Right hand side, you can see the two interchangeable kinds that came with the generic diorama set. And then here they are both rocking the Ninja Turtle 
city background. And then here it is without the cardboard back piece at all. And this is actually how I display it, mostly in my city setup. I'll butt it against the other one and make a complete building out of it. And then here's the back side, the interior. You can see that it does have an interior and it can be used to store figures or play if you wanted to. It doesn't really look presentable or appropriate for display because the inside of the playset is not finished. And here it is, butted up against the other one. Maybe you can't really see it very good. I'll need to get a little bit taller up. And then here's a shot of the side of the two dioramas together, making complete building with front, back, and a pretty decent sized rooftop, as you can see here. And then here's a little bit more of an aerial view. You can see that putting them against each other without the carver piece creates a nice rooftop and it gives you a lot of play space and playability. And this was how I had the previous two of the street scene dioramas displayed, the turtle versions. I had in my city with these two fire escapes on the side. One thing I think is really cool about them is that the top layer of the fire escape is completely even with the roof of the diorama. Next layer completely even with the next layer and of course the bottom layers are level as well. This is a pretty cool fire escape that I got at Hobby Lobby a couple of years ago. It was in the seasonal section and it's a, some kind of a plant holder that looks great as a fire escape. Slightly oversized for the 112 scale but I absolutely adore this thing. Wish I could have got more but there were only two in the store that I went to and I got them on a pretty discounted clearance price. And just another angle to show off the awesomeness of this 112th action figure play display area. Personally completely blown away with this piece, especially the way it fits in with some of the other pieces I have so nicely. Now I mentioned earlier that some of these parts are interchangeable and customizable. From the air conditioner to the windows to the solid brick wall to the doorway, these things can be moved around. So here it is as it was pictured on the box. And then here's the set if I took all four air conditioning units from the two turtle and the two generic dioramas and put them onto here. Like I said before, there are 40 different bricks that can be removed, so you have 40 different options to put the air conditioner. Just seems an absolutely ludicrous feature to give this playset. I'm hoping that eventually we'll have different accessories we can plug in there. It seems the only logical explanation, unless it was just a scrapped idea that NECA abandoned. Next, notice the position of the door and windows. And then now look at them. There are actually eight different removable pieces, six windows, a complete brick section, and a doorway. They can go on the top, top left, bottom, etc., etc. And if you want to take it even a step further, since I got two dioramas, I can make it have all eight windows, or two brick pieces, two doorways, etc. And of course the same was true with the prior version, except that I must say in the newer version the quality control has been stepped up, they're a lot easier to take out. This one here I wouldn't dare trying to swap them around. It seems like it would be a very unpleasant task and could result in some breakage. Of course the pieces are not interchangeable between the two dioramas. I mean yes they would physically fit, but the bricks are completely different colors and it would look absolutely ridiculous. Another feature of this playset is the windows. You can see here we've got Michael Myers inside looking out at this potential victim. He's getting ready to eliminate. And there are just so many different things you can do with this diorama. So many different ways to display it. Here I have took them face to face with each other. Added some Gotham sidewalk or road pieces between them. And here you've got a block, a city block, be able to walk, walk through. Shop the shops, you could say it's an alleyway, anything you want to do. Just so many possibilities here. Here's an example of something pretty cool it can be used for. Say this building is the top of GCPD and here's the bat symbol. Here are some Movie Master Batman figures. Reenacting the scene from the Dark Knight where Harvey Dent calls Batman and Gordon and them have an argument together. Now here's a diorama with a bunch of McFarlane Fortnite figures. 
kind of making a little setup from the game. You can see two dioramas butt up against each other with the other two dioramas butted up against each other. Make sort of a city type of display. You can see here they're on top of the building shooting each other. A little alleyway here in the back just showing there are so many different options of what you can do with these playsets and dioramas. Next I would like to compare this diorama to other various 1 12th scale dioramas. See how it stacks up. I don't think any of them can hold a candle to this guy though. So here's the generic diorama compared to the Ninja, Ninja Turtle diorama. Notice they have two different nighttime city cardboard pieces, backdrops, and the turtle one is quite a bit darker. Kind of makes me think more movie-ish. And the other one is more, I don't know, action figure, comic-ish. Just sort of a different feel to me. Both of them look great. Both of them look like they're realistic colors. Absolutely so thankful to have both of these. So thankful to have two of both of these. And as you can see, here is the location that the two turtle dioramas have been in my action figure world. Going to have to make room for the other ones near them. And then here is the older turtle playset with the newer version's nighttime background cardboard piece. And then here is the turtle playset with the daytime backdrop. Pretty cool looking darker playset, daytime. I was really curious how this was going to look. Now here are the two turtle dioramas put together to make a really wide building or perhaps just a block, walking down the block. All kind of stuff can happen here. And here they are for the side, both of them back to back. Two buildings next to each other in an overall city setup. Really, really cool. Three dimensional, able to go on every level. Every single side and aspect of this is usable at this point. And then here's a good look at both sets facing each other. You can see some of the color differences. A lighter gray on the rooftop versus a darker gray. Got of course the bricks, dark red versus a light brown on this side. Sort of green or teal window covers and that one's gray or black on that side. Then the bottom, of course the street here is covered with a yellow line around it which I think looks pretty good. And this one here is just plain dark gray. Now this is probably how these things are going to be displayed in my action figure city with either one back to back with itself next to the other kind back to back with itself with the two fire escapes on the two sides. Really wish I had a third fire escape I could pop it between these guys but these are long since unavailable. I personally would have preferred to have had two of the darker ones side by side and then two of the lighter ones side by side butted against each other but the fact that the rooftops are different colors kind of ruined that idea so this is about the best I can do for now. Here it is next to the most recent 1 12th scale diorama that I've acquired. This is a from Diamond Select. It's a Ghostbusters firehouse front diorama. It was a collecting connect. You had to get 15 figures to build this. It is an absolutely amazing piece. And as is the NECA one, both of them fit excellently into my action figure city. Notice that the NECA one is wider as well as taller if you include the cardboard backdrop, but shorter if you look at just the plastic. And you can see here the NECA one is also quite a bit deeper than the diamond one. And this is where the firehouse front is in my action figure city when it is not being taken out. This is where it stays when it's quote unquote off duty, just part of the city diorama. You can see above it more buildings, buildings, etc, etc. Here it is next to the other Diamond Select Ghostbusters Collecting Connect 15 figure diorama. This is the rooftop from the end of Ghostbusters 1. Quite a bit shorter than the NECA playset, but I will say it's every bit as good. This is an absolutely amazing piece. I wish that it, the place I displayed it was a little bit easier to access, but I'm so thankful to have both these guys in my action figure world. And this Diamond Ghostbuster diorama is deeper and wider, but shorter than the NECA playset. And then speaking of playsets that look good, butted up against each other, this 
diamond Ghostbuster rooftop looks excellent just like the NECA one in the same fashion. And as you can see here is a side view of the exact same thing. And as you can see here this is where the Ghostbuster rooftop diorama stays when it is in my action figure setup up here on the very top kind of hanging off the top of the bookshelf a little bit because it's very deep and you can see the second one over there and then here it is next to the extreme sets the building diorama 1.0 you can see that the NECA set and the extreme sets are pretty similarly heighted if you consider the accessories that both of them have the actual building part is taller on the extreme sets one these are both wonderful additions to my Action Figure City. And then yes, of course, I did get two of these as well. And here's how these buildings are displayed in my Action Figure City. You can see once again they're butted up against each other back to back. And with the other buildings there's a nice road or huge alleyway between them. And then here it is next to the Extreme Sets Building Diorama 2.0. I did recently notice that there's a 3.0 and a 4.0 coming in the near future. Looking forward to getting both of them. You can see this building is quite a bit shorter than the 1.0 from Extreme Sets. But it's a little bit more detailed. Definitely sturdier, especially the rooftop. The quality control has been increased. And then of course, what a surprise, I got two of these as well. They make quite a bit of nice city displays in my action figure world. And this is where this building stays in my action figure city. You can see they're butted up against each other back to back. Kind of underutilizing the NECA diorama's other side. One day I'll try to rethink a way to display these properly and utilize them a little better. And then here it is next to the old Kenner Ghostbuster Firehouse. A little out of scale nowadays, but still always holds a special place in my heart and a special place in my action figure city. And then I know, big surprise, I have two of these as well. They fit in nicely in my city. And then here are these in my action figure city setup. You can see here, make a two together, large rooftop, good amount of play area as well as the two brick walls next to each other to create more size of buildings. Some sidewalk pieces below, etc. And then here it is next to the Mattel Masters of the Universe Castle Grayskull. This is intended for 112 scale figures. Both are holy grails in the 112 scale action figure collections. Here it is next to sort of a homemade building I have in my action figure display. This is a table that's been repainted silver and black sort of looking like metal frames of a building. And you can see the Clerks and Jay and Silent Bob cardboard dioramas below kind of making it the outside of a shop. Above we've got a Budweiser item I picked up from a grocery store, very tall Statue of Liberty. And in the back we've got the Ninja Turtle play sets, sewer play sets, more recent, they're for 6 inch scale and there are three different kinds of course. Yes, I do have all three of them against the back wall over there. Next I would like to check out how many different action figure lines in the 6 and 7 inch scale fit in with this thing, both scale wise and style wise. I will start my comparisons with taller action figure lines and work my way to smaller ones. And I will try to put civilian or regular city looking characters inside of here because I'm going to be using this as a regular building in a regular city diorama setup, possibly my Gotham City. Now here's this diorama loaded up with NECA action figures. These are all figures that came from the same company, NECA, that made this diorama. Next has been making action figures for a very long time, so some of these are at least probably 10 years old. These are all figures that are in kind of regular clothing and can be used as civilians or bad guys or good guys or just regular people in regular city setups. All the action figure lines that I see in front of me are Hunger Games, 
Twilight, Harry Potter, Nightmare on Elm Street, Devil's Rejects, Boondock Saints, A Christmas Story, Friday the 13th, Evil Dead, Uncharted, Predator, Alien, Portal, Pan's Labyrinth, Planet Terror, Kill Bill, Divergent, Shaun of the Dead, Hitman, Scarface, American Psycho, Sin City, Terminator, The Preacher, Blade Runner, Reservoir Dogs, and Phantasm. You can see some of the larger and smaller NECA figures fit in greatly with this. And it easily accommodates a ton of figures. And then here's the diorama holding a bunch of Jack's Pacific figures on it. These are mostly wrestling figures, some Rocky figures as well. Back in the day, these were the easiest ways to get suited regular civilians or thugs. I bought a ton of them, but they're a little bit bigger and different style than most of the other figures I collect. Had these for many, many years from way back in the day. And then here are some Diamond Select action figures on this diorama. Diamond Select figures are almost the tallest action figure line right next to Jack's that I bother collecting. They're the higher end of 7 inches, a hair above NECA. Action figures here in regular looking clothing to use the diorama from X-Files, Stargate, iZombie, Battlestar Galactica, Pulp Fiction, Dark Tower, Mallrats, Sin City, Ghostbusters, and Clerks. And then here's the diorama with some Diamond Select Gotham action figures on it. These guys fit in absolutely fantastic with this diorama. It's a regular building street diorama with some regular suit guys from a city TV show. Most of these guys are in regular attire, but even the supervillains fit in great with this diorama. And then here are some regular looking figures from McFarlane Toys. These are 7 inch scale and fit in pretty nicely with this diorama. And for any more figures from Lost, Napoleon Dynamite, Shaft, the Walking Dead and Stranger Things. And here are the dioramas with some McFarlane Fortnite action figures on them, just like in the game, jumping on buildings, shooting each other. And here are the dioramas with some various Mezco action figures on them. These are regular suited Mezco figures in the 7 inch scale. We've got figures from the TV show Heroes, The Spirit, Scarface. Goon action figures, Breaking Bad, Reservoir Dogs, and Sons of Anarchy. And then here they are next to some various DC Direct and DC Collectibles figures. And then here are the dioramas with some Mattel wrestling figures. Usually on the top layer here we've got some, I don't know, SWAT or military guys of some kind. And then next, on the middle level, we've got some sort of biker looking thugs. In the bottom is some big, huge, strong muscle guys to be used in any fashion in my Batman world. And then here are the couple dioramas with some more Mattel wrestling figures. These are just some overall figures that are in regular clothing and look like they could utilize this city diorama as just some city citizens doing whatever. And then here are the dioramas with some Mattel wrestling female women action figures. That are in kind of regular clothing. I've got a ton of wrestling women that are in sort of bikini looking things. Those ones are not really appropriate for walking around the city. Most of these ones here are in regular attire and work good for citizens or damsels in distress. And then here are the dioramas with some more Mattel wrestling figures. These are all a bunch of suited guys. I'm a sucker for suited action figures. They can be used for so many different things in a city setup, whether it be thugs, gangsters, mobsters, civilians, businessmen, anything you want them to be, they can be. And here are the dioramas with some Mattel DC Universe Classics and DC Multiverse figures. You can see we've got the heroes on the top. At the bottom we've got some suited guys and a few villains. And in the middle row we've got some villains and I put some Collect and Connect figures here. You can see from the smallest to the tallest Collect and Connects they still fit into this diorama pretty nicely. And then here the dioramas are with some Mattel Movie Master figures. These figures are a little bit smaller than DC Universe Classics, but not by too much. Here are some figures that are appropriate for a city diorama. You can see some regular guys in the bottom. 
Alfred, Bruce Wayne, some detectives, Harvey Dent, etc. On the middle layer, we've got a whole bunch of police officers. And then on the top, a bunch of Joker thugs and regular thugs. And then here's a diorama with some Hasbro Marvel Legends figures. These are all the Marvel Legends figures I have that are in kind of regular clothing. Looks like they could be regular people walking through a city diorama. You can see even the biggest to the smallest ones fit in pretty nicely with this thing. And then here are the dioramas with some Mafex action figures. Mostly suited guys. Looking pretty good scale wise with this thing. And then here are the dioramas with a couple different companies take on Buffy and Angel figures. These figures are a tiny bit smaller, probably more so the size of figure arts figures, but they work absolutely fantastic for civilians. A lot of these guys are just in regular clothing. There are a ton of different figures from the Buffy and Angel verse I don't have that I'd love to add to my collection eventually. You can even see here at the bottom we've got Xander as he was when he was driving the ice cream truck, giving stuff out. He's in a nice sort of food prep outfit with a wrestling hot dog stand. Perfect for city dioramas and setups. So my whole point is showing all those different action figures that I consider sort of to be able to use as regular people is this is what this diorama is for for me. Regular city setup, all kind of different uses. Multi-purpose can be used for Batman, regular stuff, heck of I me mean, for Predator figures. There's really no limit to what you can do. Marvel figures, John Wick, Kingsman, anything this can be sort of substituted in. It is an absolutely fantastic diorama. If I were to rate this diorama, I'd probably give it a good 9 out of 10. That is the highest rating I've given anything so far. I might give the turtle diorama a 9.5 out of 10 because it's perhaps a tad better. But this thing is amazing. It is a holy grail, a gem as far as 112 action figure collecting. If you have the space for this, go get it. I bet this thing is going to be much more valuable over time. I am guessing NECA is going to release another version in the future and hopefully an accessory set for them. Get this diorama. You will enjoy it. It does take a lot of space, but boy is it worth it. This is D Hunter. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, press like below. If you want to see additional videos from me, press subscribe. If you have anything you want to say about the video, add to the comments below. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching. I'll talk to you guys real soon.